What's up, everybody? We alive. Yet another day above soil. Before I give y'all the tea this morning, I wanted to talk to y'all about the importance of advocating. As far as advocating is concerned, I'm talking about self-deletion. If you feel that you or someone else you know is thinking about self-deletion, do something. Tell the authorities. Below, within the description, I'm going to give you a number to the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. Please use this resource. It is a good resource. It has helped to save a lot of people's lives. If you at all have the feeling that somebody might not be feeling their best, or they might up and self-delete themselves, use that resource, I beg you. It's, it's, it's an epidemic. We already have a lot of people who are losing their lives due to the you know what. But it's also important to think about your mental health. So without further ado, today I want to talk about mental health. Your mental health. When you go into some certain situations, you might get a good vibe from it. That you're about to go to a beach. You can hear the waves crash upon the shore. You can hear seagulls in the air as they munch on a person's cold french fries. Um, you could hear different cars. Maybe it's a muscle car. They roll up and they park. You see a whole bunch of people running around in the sand flying kites. Good vibes. Really, really, really good vibes. So when you come to these specific places, you feel real good on the inside. There's not really any premonitions. These are all in well, but you might run into another situation where things aren't feeling that good. And once again, I've experienced this same feeling quite a few times. And it's in different forms. Sometimes it's in the form of a new person that you meet. Sometimes you go to a new city, a new town, a new place. It might be something that you're about to buy, something big that you're about to buy. Sometimes it's in the form of a job interview. Quite frankly, sometimes we go to places and we get this feeling inside of us that just doesn't feel right. We can't really put a finger on a reason for why situations like this don't feel right, but something within us just, it, it, you're not feeling it. I've got news for you. That feeling inside of you is called your intuition. Yes, intuition. I've got an intuition. My mom, my dad, my sister, my aunties, my uncles, my cousins, my grandparents, Everybody within the world has to have some sort of intuition. And when I'm referring to intuition, it's that little thing with inside of you called your conscience. When things may not be written on the wall, but you pick up certain cues, whether something may feel right or something just doesn't. Everybody has something called an intuition. And today, ladies and gentlemen, I am encouraging y'all to follow your intuition. Okay, so for this situation, I'm referring to those who may be in the younger demographic. You're out with your friends. Maybe it's during the weekend when you're outside of school. You've done your homework or you're probably procrastinating on your homework. And you're just trying to find something to do. I know of some group of people I grew up with and they constantly needed to keep doing things, dumb things to keep themselves entertained. And it's just not them doing things, it's just them having fun. However, y'all may go through a certain situation where you would think, I hope 
I don't get caught. If you have a feeling that you're about to do something and you might get caught, you probably shouldn't do that situation because that is your intuition telling you don't do it. And sure enough, there's some people out there who just go ahead and do it. Mm-hmm. So they go out and do it. And then when they get caught by somebody, maybe it's the Favo, maybe it's a, a grown adult, they get themselves in trouble, and then they find themselves in a hole that is really, really hard to get themselves out of. Yup. But their intuition is telling them, it's not a good idea to do this, but you do it anyway. So another thing that I wanted to talk to y'all about is getting played. Played. And there's a reason for why I spell play P-L-A-Y apostrophe D. Yes, it is really, really, really misspelled to the point where it's pretty hard to miss. Well, I do this for a specific reason. See, when you get played, Sometimes you have that feeling inside of you that ain't right, but you go through it, you go through with that, that plan, and things don't come out right. You can see it coming from a mile away, but you've been had. It's like a real bad train wreck. Sometimes you see a train wreck, and it's so graphic that your eyes stay glued to it. Play. You encounter somebody who is a grown adult and they're offering you a lifetime kind of blessing. They say, oh, partake in this company. We're going to make you rich. But you notice how there's not a lot of backing up of facts with this one person. But you go along with it anyway. But then you find yourself giving money instead of getting money. You see that there's something not going right, but you go along with it anyway. Played. So I'm going to help y'all in the event that y'all feel like you're about to get played. I want to tap in to that intuition. I want to help you unlock that so that you can prevent yourself and other people from getting played. Before you go into a situation where things just don't seem right, you might start to get a headache. You will break out a cold sweat. You start salivating and you're not hungry. Maybe it's in the form of heartburn. You might get nauseous. Sometimes you might get diarrhea to the point where you're going to the bathroom just out of the, out of the blue. And this is happening right before you get to a situation where things just don't seem right. No, you're not getting the you know what. If you feel that you're about to go into something that is not good, you best listen to your intuition. Understandably, you might see something that other people don't see or whether you're questioning something or not, it's probably best to interact with somebody. Let's say that you run into somebody who is giving you a business adventure where they're about to give you a whole bunch of money. I mean, it may look good on the surface, but you just want to be sure it's legitimate. So one of the things that I would encourage you to do is communicate. There's a reason for why we have so many people on the face of the earth. Maybe it's communicating with somebody at the breakfast bodega. Maybe you go to Starbucks and there's a really cool barista that serves you tea. Or maybe, I don't know, you go to Burger King or you go to McDonald's and you see a regular person working there and you probably hit it off with them a couple times and you're like, hey, um, I heard of this one situation. I just want to get your feedback on it. I, I've been feeling this, that, and the third about it. 
and I want to get your opinion. Is this something that I'm misreading or am I reading into it enough or am I not reading into it enough? That kind of stuff. At least voicing your concerns to person is a great way to get clarity about some of those situations where you have a negative intuition. As of lately, I've been doing a few readings on some literature about cults. You have some people who joined the Unification Church, also known as the Moonies. In some cases, you have people who are members of the FLDS, or maybe there are some people who have tragically lost their lives when they were in the People's Temple when they went to Jonestown back in the 70s. Sometimes people may feel that they're at the lowest of the low and they just want to feel like they belong to a certain group or they want to feel like they're loved. This, my friend, this is a great way for people to get suckered in. This is the starting point to how people get played. And I don't want any of y'all to go through that because it's costly, not only monetary, but it's also something that might cause you to lose your life and others. At this moment in time, there's a lot of people out there who might be job searching because due to the you know what, you might have lost your job. But I'm here to tell you, don't accept any job that comes your way. Even if you really need that job, you might need to look into why you need a job or why you want a job. Of course, you're going to need a job to survive. But if you're going into a toxic work environment and they're treating you like crap, don't do it. Just don't do it. I feel you. I feel you. There are people out there who are in the struggle that don't have a job. They're on the street begging for money. They're begging for money from their friend. They're begging for money from their parents. They're begging for money from their sister, their brother, their auntie, their uncle. And they're trying to make ends meet. I understand that. Believe that. Not all jobs out there are glittery or golden. They may look appealing. They may look appealing from your eyes. But friends, <laughs> you're only seeing through the window and not the whole house. So when it comes to interviews or getting that job that may or may not feel that good, here are a few suggestions. Usually a person would do a phone interview before they go into an actual in-person interview or maybe a next round interview through Zoom. So if you notice during that next round interview that people tend to be kind of cold, not very friendly, they may say, good luck, or instead they, they might want to say, I hope you do well. If you notice that something just feels kind of cold, people are not really receptive. That's a sign. If you do your research and you notice that there are a lot of people leaving this organization, that's a sign. Most of the time when you interview with somebody, you're going to meet with a director of that program or director of a department. If you're not getting good vibes from the director, you might be in for a treat, I'm just saying. Body language. Are they looking at you or are they looking at the clock? If they're looking at you and they're trying to move things along, probably not a good idea. If you just feel like something's not right, probably not a good idea. You notice that some people are not giving you clear and concise answers to the questions that you have for the interviewers. That's also a sign. So you look at all of these kind of things 
and you determine, okay, is this job right for me? I'll tell you what, there was this one situation where I was looking on Glassdoor and I was looking on monster.com for jobs. So there's this one job that caught my eye and there was a very wide range for a salary, very wide. And to be honest, I was like, okay, this looks interesting. However, it said there was a pay range. So that's a red flag. Some jobs may give you a salary for the job, but other times you might be working off of commission. Some people might jive well with commission. They may be a master of words or they may know people who have a lot of money. So if you're a person who knows people, who knows people who have a lot of money, go ahead, knock yourself out. Mm -hmm. Go for that job. However, as of right now, not a lot of people have a lot of money. So you're going to need to survive and be your good self so that you're not tapped. Don't be afraid to ask a direct question. If someone reaches out to you and is saying, hey, we like your qualifications, come to this interview. We want to see how things are going to go. Ask them, okay, so is this job salary or commission based? They're going to need to give you an answer. And if they're not giving you a clear answer, you're probably going to get played. Anyway. With all of those things put into consideration, I tell you all this. Look at the signs. Do you feel nauseous before going to a situation? Are you getting a headache? Is your mind telling you, it's probably not a good idea. I hope I don't get caught. Listen to your intuition. When you listen to your intuition, you're going to have less chances of yourself getting played. So what if you do get played? Learn from it. Doing something the first time and failing is a mistake. But if you're doing something the second time, knowing that the result is good, what the result's gonna be, that's a decision. If you get played, prevent yourself from getting played by remembering what happened and not doing it again. It's called thinking outside the box, ladies and gentlemen. There's a lot of things within our society that discriminate. Death, however, does not discriminate. I'm still on the road to 100 subscribers. If you want to be a member of the LDX family, hit that subscribe button. I'll be more than happy to have y'all on board. Also, I have the Etsy and Instagram page right within the description. And you can also get these crosses just in time for the Easter holiday or for Pentecost. I'm going to be uploading a whole bunch of new listings. One of the listings I'm going to renew is for these crosses. These three crosses is going to go to somebody who lives in Texas, but huh, I'm definitely going to have a lot more. But anyway, until next time, I'll see y'all later. I'm out.